Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 19b. This is the second in a series of tutorials related to preparation of the uh, Statement of Cash Flows. This tutorial will focus on preparing the Operating Activities section of the Statement of Cash Flows using the Direct Method. This tutorial has two learning objectives. The first will be to prepare the Operating section of the Statement of Cash Flows using the Direct Method. And second, to review the preparation of an optional net cash flows worksheet. Some students like to use this to help them with the direct method approach. This tutorial will continue with the McCoy limited example and uh, requirement two, which is using direct method, prepare the statement of cash flows for the year ended December 31st, 2020, and prepare an optional worksheet to determine the net cash flow from operating activities. Let's begin. Where we start with our statement of cash flows, Remember that all other sections for the statement of cash flows, i.e. the investing section and financing section, are exactly the same. The only difference is the operating activity section. But this part here where we have the actual title of the section, that's the same. Our first item is going to be cash received from customers. And how we determine the cash from customers is we basically go to our income statement where we find sales. That's going to be a positive number, so it's a cash inflow. So the way I'm showing this is everything is added and anything in brackets is a cash outflow. So we start with 975,000 in sales and we add an outflow of 9,000, which is the increase in accounts receivable. Now we did this calculation in the indirect method, right? So we still use that difference between the current asset that's related to cash from customers. Then we're also going to add once again, this time the increase in unearned revenues. Unearned revenues increased. That's an increase in cash. Remember, this is a liability, and we said at the end of the tutorial last time that when liabilities go up, cash goes up as well. That means the total cash received from customers is $980,200. And what this shows is that there are three accounts that are related to customers. Sales from the income statement, accounts receivable from the balance sheet, and unearned revenues from the balance sheet. The next item is going to be cash paid to suppliers. There's an alternative approach, which I'll show later on, where the suppliers and other expenses can be combined. But I think for the work involved, it's probably a little bit easier for students to break them up into two pieces. So when we're dealing with suppliers, the related accounts are going to be cost of goods sold, inventory, and accounts payable because we purchase inventory in order to sell that inventory turns into cost of goods sold when it's sold and the inventory is purchased on accounts payable we start with an outflow of 341,530 that's cogs from the income statement then we say okay our inventory decreased when an asset goes down we have basically sold the asset and we've turned it into cash we're adding the twelve thousand dollar decrease in inventory and then accounts payable went up by 18,000, so we add the increase in accounts payable. So the total cash paid to suppliers is $311,530. The next few are pretty easy. Cash paid to employees also needs to be shown separately. So we go to the income statement, 366,220 salaries expense. It's negative because it's an outflow. The related account is salaries payable. The salary is payable increased, so we're going to add an inflow of 9800 to the outflow of the 366220 for salaries expense, and that gives us $356,420 cash paid to employees. Then we have cash paid for interest attacked the same way. We have from the income statement a $9,000 expense, so we put that as an outflow, and then we add an outflow again, which is the decrease in interest payable. And so the cash paid for interest, $10,800. Cash paid for income taxes, another item that's required to be shown. Again, we go to the income statement, find the income tax expense. So we start with an outflow of 27,000. The related account on the balance sheet is income tax payable, which increased. So we're adding an inflow of $2,800. We have a net outflow of $24,200 cash paid for income taxes. And the last item is cash paid for other expenses. The way this is accomplished is we go and again look at the income statement for all other expenses that are cash related. You'll notice that nowhere in here do we see depreciation, expense, amortization, gains or losses, any of those kinds of things. 
So we are only looking to reconcile cash items. Administrative expenses at some point are paid in cash. So we pull the administrative expenses, which is an outflow from the income statement, 155800 And the only account that's left that'd be related to that would be the prepaid account. Prepaid's decreased, so that's an inflow. So the net outflow of cash paid for other expenses is $154,800. And guess what? When we look at the total at the end of the day, net cash flow from operating activities is $122,450. And that was the same as what we got with the indirect method. What I'm going to show here is an alternative where we can take the cash from suppliers of 311,530, right, cash paid to suppliers, and the cash for other expenses, and we can combine them. So we could show alternatively cash paid to suppliers, which captures everything, of $466,330. So in requirement 2B here, we're looking at an optional worksheet to use. This does exactly the same thing that we just did when we went through the preparation of the operating activities step by step. But some students like a, a defined process, right? So you can set this little uh, table up where you have your income statement account, you've got uh, your changes to working capital, and then the net cash flow, which appears in the statement. So we've broken this up into the same pieces, right? But what I did here is I've included cash paid to suppliers, everything. If we uh, start with the cash received from customers, we got the sales, as I said, and then the related accounts. The nice thing about the worksheet is it helps you see the accounts that are related to sales and all the other items. So sales is partnered up with accounts receivable and unearned revenue. Accounts receivable obviously went up for this to uh, decrease the cash flow. And the unearned revenue went up, but that's an increase to cash flow. So that gives us a net cash flow of $980,200. If we look at the cash paid to suppliers, and again, that this is combined, so we go to the income statement where we pull the cost of goods and the admin expenses. And then we look to the balance sheet. We had the inventory decrease, the uh, prepaid expense decrease, and the accounts payable increase gave us this 466,330. The cash paid to employees, from the income statement, salaries expense, and from the balance sheet, salaries payable. Same thing for interest and income taxes. This is a long way of doing what we did in the previous slide. This is an optional approach, and it's probably handy when you're learning this for the first time, but at some point, you may get to the point where you don't need it anymore. Now, this slide just basically is the same thing from the previous, just sort of condensed but also to show you the memo items right now what this does is it shows the income statement from beginning to end the whole thing right if you compare this to the income statement you'll find all the accounts or all the line items in the income statement and guess what the full worksheet shows the net income of 120,000. the purple area shows all the items that end up in the cash flow statement and the uh, shaded uh, kind of red area down here shows the items that we do not include using the direct method, right? The depreciation expense, the amortization, the equity income from the uh, investment and associate and the losses. Remember, these are all non-cash. So any non-cash items with a direct method are left out. We don't do anything with them. But uh, if, if you're using the worksheet fully, at least you know that you have looked at and dealt with every single income statement account. Okay, and that's the most important thing. You identify from the income statement what are cash related. So that's all the items in the purple area and all the items on the uh, income statement that are non-cash related and that's in the lower shaded area. So now we'll wrap up with key points to remember. As indicated in tutorial 19A, both ASPE and IFRS can use the indirect or direct methods, but the direct method is preferred. We can use a worksheet to reconcile changes in accounts and identify memorandum items. And again, it should agree to the income on the income statement. The direct method begins with the income statement items and adjusts for increases and decreases in the related working capital accounts. So the current assets or current liabilities. So when we look at the preparation of that activity section, what we have listed here are the important items 
the first five items are the minimum disclosures that you have to have on the cash flow statement. Remember, cash from customers. The accounts that are related to cash from customers are sales, accounts receivable and unearned revenues, the related accounts to suppliers, are your cost of goods, inventory and accounts payable, cash paid to employees, of course, your salaries or wages expense, depending on what the company uses, and the payable account, the cash paid for interest. The only two accounts related to that are your interest expense and the payable. Same thing with cash paid for income taxes, the income tax expense and the payable. And when it comes to other expenses, the all remaining cash related expenses and prepaid expenses, accrued liabilities that could be considered as well. And again, the cash paid for other expenses can be combined with cash paid to suppliers. So this concludes tutorial 19b. If you had not had a chance to look at the preparation of the statement using the indirect approach, you want to go back to tutorial 19a. You can now proceed to tutorial 19c for preparation of the investing activities section of the cash flow statement.